Going into Tales of Zillia, I heard some pretty nasty things about some aspects about the game, such as it being rushed, really linear, among other things from importers. I took what they said to heart and played it with those in mind. The game looked amazing in trailers and gameplay videos, so I thought, what could go wrong? I mean, people talked down on Final Fantasy XIII, and I thought that it was a wonderful game, so you can't listen to people. Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Zillia takes place in the wonderful world of Rize Maxia, a place where humans and spirits coexist. In a series first, you're actually asked to choose between two characters, Jude Mathis, a young medical student, and Mila Maxwell, a woman who can summon spirits. By choosing a character, you'll see the story from their points of view. There will be times when two split up temporarily, and you'll follow the character that you chose to see what they're doing while they're apart. It's a neat idea, sure, but the execution leaves something to be desired. Jude and Mila are together roughly 90% of the time, and the times where they split up are so few and far between that basically feels like the character selection is pointless. Having beaten both campaigns, I can say with certainty that only playing one campaign is necessary. This dual protagonist mechanic didn't feel like it added all that much. It feels more like a gimmicky bonus. In fact, if you play as Mila first, you'll miss out on vital plot points because there will be times when Jude is told something important and you're not there to hear it, and when you do go back, you'll just be told a brief summary of a major revelation. I think that it would have been a better idea if they forced you to play as Jude first, then on a new game plus, it could unlock Mila's path. Or, better yet, don't have dual protagonists at all. Personally, I think that Jude's campaign is vastly superior to Mila's, because the story feels more fleshed out and is explained better, and also features some heart-wrenching moments and stunning character development. It is highly recommended that you play as Jude first, and if you ended up playing as Mila first, then, well, I feel sorry for you. Great concept, yes, but horrible execution. But anyway, moving on from that, let's talk about the story itself. If you play as Jude first, you'll start off at his college. He goes to see his professor who has an award ceremony coming up, so Jude gets his signature to enter the palace for permission. However, when he arrives, the guard gives him a letter from his professor. However, it's not his handwriting. Jude decides to investigate, and as he wanders around the city, he meets Mila, a woman who says that she is able to summon the four elemental spirits of fire, water, earth, and wind. Jude follows Mila through a military plant, and the two of them discover a large weapon known as the Lance of Kresnik. Talking any more about the story would only spoil things at this point, let me just say the story in this game is incredibly engaging. That is one of the most original plot lines in the series with no cliches to speak of. Not only that, the story is much darker and more mature than a lot of the other Tales games, and has many elements in it that you don't see in a lot of other JRPGs. One character has Alzheimer's, another character has major dependency issues. The game also throws so many twists at you and you'll never see them coming. One of the main driving forces of the game's narrative are the characters. Just to get people up to speed, one of the things that the Tale series is famous for are its characters, and Zillia is no exception. Zillia has no doubt one of the best casts in the entire series. Everyone from Jude's strong will and down-to-earth nature, to Mila's cold honesty and charming naivete, to Alvin's perverse attitude and sarcasm, to Elise's timid and innocent nature, the cast is just so well-rounded, and none of them really fall into any stereotypes. Even Mila, who doesn't really know much about the world, isn't an idiot who asks stupid questions and who acts is the annoying healer. The story is so good, in fact, that the game is worth purchasing at full retail price just for it alone. However, that's not to say that the story is completely without fault, though, because it does have faults. The game was released on the series' 15th anniversary, but since the game was such a big project, they couldn't release the game in time for it, so they rushed through it at the end to get it out. Because of this, the last few hours of the game have an awkward and unnatural build-up, giving you the feeling that more could have happened. Many plot points near the game's conclusion feel very rushed and are suddenly resolved with no real pace to it, and it feels incredibly disjointed. The series staple skits make their return. For those of you who don't know, skits are short, optional conversations that occur after story events, side quests, when certain conditions are met after a battle, and anything in between. When a prompt appears at the bottom of the screen, you can press the select button to view the skit. The characters will start to chatter about random things, like the city that they might be in, cats versus dogs, and tons more. These skits provide more insight on the characters and their development, as well as their relationships between each other. Not only that, for the first time in the entire franchise, you can view the skits right from the menu whenever you want. This is another thing that I hope that they keep in the future installments. This game decided to go back to using a box portrait skits as opposed to the full body portraits used in Graces. While that was wholeheartedly appreciated, I personally felt that it took away a lot of the charm and it limited the animations of the characters during the skits, and I was glad to see it return to the way that it used to be. However, Zillia in particular is filled with a shitload of innuendo and sex talk. In fact, it's borderline pornographic and how this game got a teen rating is beyond me, but hey, what's wrong with a little bit of innuendo? Window, right? Ah, the innuendo. You see the way Mila freezes those enemies in their tracks? I guess she really is into bondage. Oh, is that what the technique is called? Oh, I thought I'd get more of a rise out of you than that. 
I'm just tired of your lies and innuendos. Just give it up already. Oh, and now I'm the one being tied down by your sadistic decrees. Sorry, Jude. I'm not that into bondage play. But it is true that some people can only experience true intimacy when they're tied and bound. The conversation takes a surprising turn. Are you speaking from personal experience? No, I read it in a book. It was called Men and Women Beneath the Sheets. What sort of books are you reading? There was a similar comment in The Aesthetics of Being the Catcher, as well. That one's probably about something different. Oh? Well, well, I wouldn't really know. Sounds like Mila's more into total freedom than tying anyone down. The visuals of the game are unfortunately its weakest suit. That's not to say that it's an ugly looking game, because it's not. However, it certainly doesn't look nearly as good as other games on the console, such as Final Fantasy XIII or Valkyria Chronicles. I'll talk about what's good though. For one, the cutscenes are much improved. Rather than using the tried and true text bubbles present of all of its predecessors, the game uses fully animated character animations that look much more natural rather than the stiff hand movements and head turns. However, that leads us to the environments. While each city has a distinct feel and actually look quite nice, each and every map, whether whether it be an open field or a dungeon, are complete 100% palette swaps. One flat map is a desert, the next flat map is the same map, but it's snowing. This is a shame because each map consists of several different zones and are really all quite big, allowing for tons of exploration, but it's not fun when you're exploring what is essentially the same map over and over again. Like when I was walking around, I was just thinking to myself, what, I, when did I put in dot .hack? I'm like, because all these things are just palette swaps of each other, that's what dot .hack is, just, I mean, not that bad, but still. But it would be a crime if I didn't mention the absolutely gorgeous anime cutscenes. Done by Ufotable of Fate Zero and Kata no Kyokai fame, these scenes are not only the best in the series, they triumph over pretty much all modern anime. I guess the, my only complaint is that I wish that there are more of them, but man, overall they're absolutely breathtaking. As far as the audio is concerned, this is another plus of Zillia. The music for one is quite nice. Most of the Tales soundtracks are rather bland or uninspired, with only a few of them standing out. However, Zillia stepped it up and created a really nice soundtrack. Something in particular that I really liked about the music are the battle themes, and how they differ depending on your chosen main character. If you play as Jude, his battle themes will be more rock-type, featuring a wide assortment of electric guitar tracks, while Milo's featured violins. Overall, a very good soundtrack and worth a listen. The voice acting in Zillia is also top-notch. Sam Regal, Matthew Mercer, and Wendy Lee are just a few of the voice actors that you'll encounter here. Even Mila's voice was great. I don't know why everyone rags on her voice. I thought it was just fine and it fit her character perfectly. Overall, while Zillia's visuals aren't the best, its anime cutscenes and solid audio definitely make up for it. I have you to thank for saving Jude. Not at all. Jude was quite a help to me. Thanks to his direct tethering with me, I was able to recharge much of my lost mana. You direct tethered with her? Uh, yeah. Muse asked me to. Was that bad? <laughs> bad? It's, uh... Direct tethering is something a spirit and a human do when, uh... It... Since we were together constantly, he was able to fill me with loads of mana. I... I had no idea you were that kind of man. Mila, wait! Why is she so angry? My... I can't believe you'd ask me to explain that to you. Do you just want to hear me say it? Is that what you're into? Someone tell me what is going on with these spirits. Just like its predecessor, Zillia features a real-time combat system. While Graces threw away many of the series' traditions out the window, Zillia brings them back with a few interesting twists. The battles take place on a two-dimensional plane, allowing you to only move left or right. However, you can hold down the L2 button to perform a free run, allowing you to run around the battlefield in all three dimensions. TP makes a return here as well as CC from Graces, although it's named AC here. Unlike Graces, all of your attacks only cost one AC each, rather than every attack consuming different amounts of it. You can attack as many times as you want, so long as you have AC remaining. Also, unlike races, there are no more A arts and B arts. Normal attacks are normal attacks and arts are arts. You can map arts to the circle button with the left stick, meaning that you can tilt the left stick in the assigned direction with the circle button to perform the art. The biggest new addition are the character links. By using the directional pad, you can select which character that you want to pair up with. That character will attack the enemy from the rear while also giving you a support skill. Each character that you link up with will have a different skill that will come in handy in all sorts of situations. If you link up with Alvin, for instance, he can break an enemy's scar and stun them in the process. Or if you pair up with Leia, she can knock the enemy off balance and steal an item from them. However, you only get this benefits from the AI character that you linked up with. So if you're playing as Jude, you won't get his support skill. This adds a big layer of strategy to an already deep 
developing complex combat system. However, they also included link arts. As you attack an enemy while linked, a gauge that is split up into five segments on the left hand corner of the screen will begin to fill up. When one segment is filled up and you use a certain art with another character, an icon will appear on your character. When this happens, you can press the R2 button to initiate a powerful co-op attack. When you use a link dart when the gauge is completely filled up, you'll then enter Overlimit, a state in which you continuously attack without the consumption of AC while also allowing you to chain link darts back to back. Also, if you learned it, you can form a Mystic Art, the Tails version of Big Badass Attacks, by using a certain art during Overlimit and by holding down the X button. Overlimits are not only cool because they can turn the tide of losing battle in your favor, they're also just so badass. <laughs> Really, the only thing that holds this battle system back from true awesomeness is the difficulty, as the game for the most part isn't really all that challenging. In fact, it's quite easy most of the time, with only a few bosses here and there giving me any trouble. Other than that, though, the battle system is a blast to play. Up until Vesperia and Graces, the Tail series has always been lacking in the character customization department. However, the aforementioned games finally decided to step it up and Zillia seems to keep up with this latest trend with its Lilium Orb system. The Lilium Orb is a grid in the form of a giant spider web containing various nodes that increase stats. When a character gains a level, they will not get any stronger. They will merely obtain a small pool of points called GP or growth points. These GP can be spent on the Lilium Orb to purchase nodes, which is essentially how your characters grow. There are also nodes inside of the web that are surrounded by other nodes. By spending your GP to acquire the nodes on the outer rim, if you obtain all of the ones that are surrounding the inner node, you will learn a skill or an art. The Lilium Orb starts off very small, offering only a handful of skills or arts, but as you purchase more nodes, the Lilium Orb will expand, granting you access to the next tier of abilities. This is a very flexible system that really makes you feel like you actually earned every ability that you learned, rather than the game just spoon feeding them to you as you level up. Next, let's move on to the shops. Rather than playing it out like a traditional RPG, where each city that you go to has the next level of equipment for you to buy, Zillia has you actually level up shops manually. By donating either money or items, the shop will gain experience points, and when levels up, that particular shop will obtain new items for purchase, as well as discounts for already existing items. Some can argue that this is a broken system that allows you to have access to really powerful equipment and high tier items and food early on in the game, but that cannot be further from the truth. Considering how linear the game is, you'll only obtain specific items from outside that only grants so much experience. So by farming for raw materials, it'll get harder and harder since the shops need more and more experience to level up, and the materials early on in the game only grant a small amount. I personally like this system as it made me feel like I earned every item that I got rather than just running to the next city and getting the next equipment that's better than my current weapon. But with all of this praise leads me to another downfall, the length. This game is much shorter than your average Tales game. If you don't touch any of the side quests, you could beat the game in around 25 to 30 hours, and if you want to do all the side content, you'll hit about 40 plus. While the game isn't too short, it's completely dwarfed by games like Tales of the Abyss and Tales of Asperia, both of which can take upwards of 60 hours without side quests. I can tell that the game is going to be much longer because of the rush final act, and it's a shame. Another flaw is that cooking has been removed entirely. In past Tales games, you could find recipes scattered across the world and have each character cook them individually, allowing them to become more proficient at cooking that particular dish. Here, cooking, for lack of a better word, consists of nothing more than purchasing pre-made dishes that grant special effects for a set number of battles. I never bothered with this system at all, with the exception of using food for the sole purpose of increasing my EXP gain after battles. This was a true disappointment. Aside from the easy difficulty, lack of cooking, and short length though, the gameplay is great. Overall, Tales of Zillia is a fantastic game. It has its flaws, sure, such as the bland environments and the rushed final act, but if you're looking for a great story, compelling characters, and deep and rewarding gameplay, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't play this wonderful game. I award Zillia a 9.5, and I'm very excited to finally play its critically acclaimed sequel, Tales of Zillia 2. Fans of the series and JRPGs in general, you need to check this one out. This has been Swordfish. See you next time. Hey Alvin, why is Tipo always talking about bazongas? What does that even mean? Oh, he finally asks. It seems you're ready to take the first steps towards becoming a man. Why do you have to make everything so weird? Forget I even asked. Bazongas are the burning fire at the heart of manhood. <laughs> Rowan? Jude, there are times to play it cool, but a man who fears his own passions is no man at all.
Yes, exactly what I was trying to say. I'm not even sure I know what we're talking about. Then you will never know Bazongas. You have to want it, Jude. You have to need it. Then teach me about Bazongas. I can barely hear you. You have to mean it. <gasps> teach me about Bazongas! Whoa! Don't go shouting things like that! Don't scold him, Leia. I read about this in a book. It's called Puberty. We're supposed to be understanding and supportive. Mm -hmm. Don't hate us. There's no shame in being burned by the fire of manhood. <laughs>